I'm Jeff Doyle. Welcome to this episode of Tracking 200. I've come up to the mountains today. A spot that I tracked last year. Tracked a real nice buck here and uh, ended up missing him towards the end of the day. Big giant buck. So what I'm doing at the end of the season is putting up some trail cameras and those have been soaking. I'd like to find out if, you know, just how big that buck is and also if he made it through the season. Um, I got my Bike Tricks e-bike with me. That's gonna help me out cover some ground. A lot of ground to cover. I've been dying to get out here. The uh, weather and my schedule hasn't made it easy, but I'm gonna also do some shed hunting. I'm gonna check out some wintering areas, areas that on Onyx, you know, they look like they're soft woods where you're gonna have some thermal cover down around those wetlands. I'm gonna take a peek at those. And I've also got some fresh cameras I may put out if I see something I like. So it's gonna be some fun. Let's get rolling. All right, I got my Smith helmet on. This helmet's rated for e-bikes. It's important to me to protect my noggin, so going the possibility of going, you know, 20 miles an hour or faster with pedaling. All right, I forgot my GoPro, but I'm going to film everything with the camera here. So just uh, my camera's right up here, but I'm just going to show you kind of why this is. If you can see this, this depression, there's like a big bowl here, right? And this bowl, it's not really conducive of a good deer trail right to drop down into there and then have to work your way back out the other thing is i'm on the uh the side of a mountain here and so you can imagine this goes up and then down here uh down this way there's a there's a bowl right this trail cuts right between them it stays right along the top of that bowl and as much as i love looking at onyx and you know dissecting the topography of things this little area it doesn't show up at all so you got to get your boots on the ground and then onyx is fantastic for picking a gel area and then getting in here and confirming things so it's also good for finding your camera when everything looks different because last time i was here it uh it definitely looked different definitely looked different so i could not tell you where my camera is if i wasn't using onyx all right i definitely had a little trouble finding this camera thankfully i just use onyx steer me up into this location and i also like to take a picture of the camera and add that to the waypoint when I mark it on Onyx. That way if uh, somebody steals it or a bear takes it, you know, I can I can go back to that same tree, right? And confirm that's the spot if I'm unfamiliar with it. So I've got this trail, you can see it. Looks like a little scrape there and it's pretty well worn. My camera's right there. So excited to see what's on it. All right, I had one buck walked past this in early December. He's a decent eight point. And then after that, two does. One, it was pretty snowy, so you really couldn't see what it was, but a couple eyeballs in the camera. And then the next activation was me walking up to it. So in, um, I guess it's almost six months, nothing's walked down this trail. And that just kind of shows that these deer definitely migrated out of this area. They didn't winter here and um, hopefully, you know, those that, that can have come back, right? I'm going to, I'm going to leave this up because it's, it's a deer trail, right? It gets some action and the batteries are still good after not having many activations. It'll be one I can come back to during the season if I need to. All right, so I got a wetland complex out behind me and had to make it through some really thick stuff. A lot of moose sign in there, but uh, I just came onto this. Let's see if you see it. Scrape right there, it's kind of shaded. Another one right there. And this looks like a real nice trail, just working on the edge of this wetland complex behind me. So I'm gonna drop the camera here and come back this fall. You know what, before I do, I'll just mention that I always like to face my cameras north, all right? and I'm looking for, especially if the trail, the trail's going this way, right? Going this way and coming back. I don't want to put it directly on the trail because that might alter the traffic of some of these bucks that they might just, they might just not like the camera, right? If they hear it clicking between uh, the daytime, and nighttime filter, or if they see the red glow. So what I like to do is position it about, you know, 30 to 45 degrees off the trail. Um, if I do 90 degrees, it might be a little too fast as the deer comes by right 
you might not get at that trigger speed you're looking for. So having to angle, you can either get them kind of going away from you or, or coming to you. And that way it's also a little bit out of their, it's in their peripheral, but not direct line of sight. Every now and then you gotta stop for a pitcher. This is a pitcher plant. You can kind of see why they call it a pitcher plant because it's shaped like a pitcher. And I'm gonna flip this around. It has these little hairs. Can you see those little hairs? And uh, what happens is the insects will uh, we'll go in there because it actually the, there's water inside and that water has a sweet smell It attracts them and with those little hairs that point down once the insects get in they can't get out So it's a carnivorous plant. I think there's only two in the Northeast They're pretty neat. I always uh, like to see them in the Adirondacks and this is the first time I've seen one in New Hampshire So again, that's the pitcher plant and uh, they grow in bogs and, and wet areas. So Pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, I'm just gonna catch my breath here. I left a trail camera at the bottom of this cut. This cut looks like it was last year and there's already a lot of fresh shoots coming up. Should be a mega food source for the, the deer, the moose, everything in the woods here. There's heavy wintry trail down there and it's kind of between this ridge and you can see that mountain in the background. It's a beautiful view today. But uh, I just want to tell you that there was a scrape I took a picture of earlier today and when I came back by, I decided to hang a trail camera. So I was saying earlier how I'd like to take a picture of the tree, I'll put the trail camera on in case it disappears. That way at least I know I'm looking at the right tree. Anyways, I didn't know you could add more than one photo to a waypoint, so I did that, I just took a second picture and now I've got two pictures assigned to that waypoint. Change it over to a trail camera icon and if I have a trail camera there, I'll turn it green so I remember. And if I don't, I turn it blue. Anyways, quick tip about Onyx. There you go. I just came across hair. It's all over the place here. I don't see a single bone though. I'm gonna take a peek around and see if uh, see if I find a deceased deer. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Tracking 200. Absolute gorgeous day to be in the woods today. Having the e-bike here was super handy. I got 59% left on the battery and uh, I'm going to pop it over into sport mode so I give a little extra juice on the way out, have some fun for the ride. But that's about it. It's a good day. Got some work done. Pre-season starting in May. All right, everybody. We'll see you on the trail. The track never ends. For more Tracking 200, join the Tracking 200 Facebook group. You can follow The Mountain Hunter on Instagram. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you're notified when new videos launch. You can also visit the Tracking 200 store, the link in the video description, for official merchandise.